So we are back on our HBCU tour, and I'm gonna give you a little time before I tell you where we are, see if you can figure it out. I'm gonna give you a couple clues. It's in Alabama, uh, founded by Booker T. Washington. So right now I'm standing in front of a statue of the most prominent faculty member here at Tuskegee University, or Tuskegee Institute as what it was called when he was here, and that would be George Washington Carver. And if you know him, he turned this into a million inventions. So right now we're inside of the George Washington Carver Museum here at Tuskegee University. It's full of lots of great artifacts dedicated to George Washington Carver. It's also part of the National Park Program for the United States. The truth is, George Washington Carver could have been a very rich man in his time. He was heavily sought out by many different companies and could have left Tuskegee at any time. He was recruited and hired by Booker T. Washington in 1896. He was promised an above average salary and rooms to perform his many experiments. Carver taught at Tuskegee for a remarkable 47 years. He also traveled the surrounding counties, teaching local farmers the benefits of crop rotation and other useful agricultural methods. You all that the greatest of men have had, two arms, two hands, two legs, two eyes, and a brain to use if you would be wise. With this equipment, they all began. So start to the top and say, I can. Look them over the wise and great. They take their boots from the common place. And similar knives and forks they use, with similar laces to tie their shoes. Don't forget to get your National Park Passport stamp. Once I left the museum, I headed over to the agricultural side of Tuskegee University, where George Washington Carver performed many of his experiments. So right now I'm in front of what used to be called Millbank Agricultural Hall. So this is where George Washington Carver actually used to do all of or most of his experiments here at Tuskegee University. George Washington Carver is also interred here at Tuskegee. He is actually buried a couple feet from Booker T. Washington, who was the person who recruited him to come here to Alabama from Iowa State College. The epitaph on his gravestone reads as follows. George Washington Carver died in Tuskegee, Alabama, January 5th, 1943. He could have added fortune to fame, but caring for neither, he found happiness and honor in being helpful to the world. Thanks for helping us explore the life and times of George Washington Carver. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a beat. Catch us next as we continue our journey at Tuskegee following Booker T. Washington.